Family time is all about creating intentional, fun times for you to pass your faith on to your family. I think a lot of times when you become a parent and you understand your responsibility to tell your children about your faith, uh, you get this uh, concept in your mind that we're gonna get this large family Bible and put it on the coffee table. And then once a week, we're gonna make our kids sit down and we're gonna stand up and we're gonna preach to them a three point sermon and then have everybody pray for about 30 minutes. Well, you can imagine how that goes over in a family no matter the age of your child. What we found is more effective is to create a family time that your children look forward to that's marked by fun and creativity, but a part of that is also where you intentionally pass on a spiritual truth to your children. Uh, you're gonna find in the resources that are provided for you here uh, examples of how you can do that. And it's going to point you to other resources that will continue to give you a treasure trove of ideas for age appropriate family times that will highlight uh, what the scripture is teaching about faith and following God. All right, everybody, time for family time. All right. Yeah, we're having our family time. Yeah, we're all together. Yeah. Well, you can keep talking. Um, we're just going to do a family okay. time. Okay. Uh, we're going to happen. We're going to study Proverbs tonight, all right? Oh, really? Hey. No. We're oh study it. Hang on a minute. You can talk after. Come on, everybody. We're seeing. children and like you nothing is more important to us than helping them build strong faith and strong character. And like you we've heard the statistics telling us only about half of the kids raised in church remain active believers as adults. Now think about that. In a day when churches are more creative than ever about children's ministries, student ministries, in the history of the church actually, our kids are walking away from the faith at an alarming rate. Now we're absolutely convinced that the problem isn't with what is or isn't happening at the church. The problem is what desperately needs to happen in our homes. We describe our family as being in the minivan years. Now here's a picture of our minivan. That's the outside. But here's the inside. And I think that'll make you feel a lot better. This picture reminds us that these are hectic, busy days because we're running everywhere trying to be intentional about school, church, sports, music lesson. But because of all this busyness, the spiritual formation of our children a lot of times ends up at the bottom of our priority list. We've used a lot of different methods in our family to, to drive faith conversation. We've used mealtime conversations, bedtime activities, drive time activities, movie nights with our teens, and so forth. But in this series, we're going to drill in and show you our favorite method of all that we used over many years of parenting. It's called family nights or family times. From the time our oldest child, who is 21 now, turned five, we made a habit of setting aside one evening per week. Why one evening per week? So that we could actually get to it every yeah, other week. week, right? But that's all right, because that means we averaged about 26 intentional faith training activities per year. And it was a fun night. It was a way of teaching our faith in an engaging way. Family night was always our kids' favorite time of the week. Yeah, here's an example of what we mean. Let's watch as this couple uses a very simple activity to teach their children a very profound truth about Jesus Christ and the gospel. I want you to pretend that I'm God. And you've got to get up the stairs to God because I want you up here with me. You cannot use any of the steps and you can't use the rails to get up to me. Okay, Carson, do you know how to get up to, to where God is? No. Oh, I do. Oh, he's going to... No, can't no. use the rails, buddy. You can't. What did you say, Carter? Pray. pray to get up to God? Pray. Pray would be a good one, but that's not the actual know, solution this time. There's only one way to get to heaven where God is. I know. All right, Kayla, what do you think? To accept Jesus and God in your heart. That's, that's right. But how else could you get from down there to up how here? How do you physically right now get from on this bottom oh. of the stairs to where he is? So let me ask you this. Can you do it on your own? No. What do you have to have to get to heaven? God, God in your heart. Right. And what does God have to do? Come down and pick us up and carry us up. That's exactly right. Okay, very so good. God's going to come down and he's going to take you up to heaven. 
All right, Kayla, you're first. Okay. No, I'm first. All right, you're going to get on my back. Dad's and you're carrying gonna, everybody take you up to, to heaven. heaven. Yay. Hey, come on. Come on, you got this. I got this. God can do anything. Oh, you're next, Carson. Okay. Okay, buddy. Oh, you're a lightweight. I can take you and Kate. <laughs> Who else was ready to go to Me. heaven? No, I'm next. Sorry. Okay. All right, ready? Hold on. Dad's getting tired. All right, Katie. All right. Mom's already got her salvation. Right, Mom? Okay. Now All right. what we're going to do is we're going to get in the car and we're going to go to Culver's because y'all accepted the challenge. Ready? Are we ready to go to Culver's? All right, let's go. Let's go. We're going to read Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the free gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Mm. Okay, which means there's nothing we have to do to earn our way to heaven. That's pretty God cool. has given that to us. So what we want y'all to understand is that God, what God did for us, we cannot do for ourselves. Right? We needed Christ to come in and intervene so that we can be with him one day in eternity. All right. Okay. How's y'all's ice cream? Is it good? good? Sometimes it had an idea of, I did, of, of us kind of all sitting at Lance's feet and him reading the Bible to us. And, I definitely had that same yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's just not the way it went. And uh, we tried that with some devotions and you know, you've got one kid crawling on your back and one rolling around on the floor. And some nights, you know, everyone's in timeout before we're done. And um, you just wanna go, why are we doing this? Is it making a difference? So I think that, um, just don't give up and keep doing it and before you know it they're asking us when are we going to have family night or what are we going to do for family night and i think that's that's the key family nights are if, if you can plan them you know if you can put some time into planning they're going to go better but I, I don't want you to ever think that you have to do that you can find resources make it really easy and you don't have to do a lot of planning but one night i wanted to do something specific and so we planned to have a have a family auction and so i had the kids basically spend some time making some whatever they wanted to sell, some works of art, you know, picture, drawing, or whatever they had. And we um, drew pictures for the auction and made stuff, and like that, my dad would not let us see when he was making it. A lot of it was just finding stuff they had made in the school year, or stuff like that, and so then we made little auction paddles for them with numbers and different things like that, and we talked about what an auction is. So we gave them all a certain amount of money, and then we told them they can bid on stuff that they want to buy. We would hold them up if we really wanted that picture, and it would go higher and higher. I just stood up there as the auctioneer, and I started auctioning off their own artwork, and so it was fun to to watch all the things that developed out of that, the th things I didn't even plan or didn't even plan for that developed out of that as they kind of affirmed one another by bidding on each other's artwork and not just their own. And as the price went up, some of their esteem went up, let them take turns being cashier. And then at the end, after, after they'd seen me do that for a while, let them take turns being the auctioneer, which was very, very interesting to say the least. And then after all that, we just, we just talked about this one simple principle that uh, the worth of something is determined by how much you're willing to give for it. You know, I mean, that's that's what you see in an auction. How much is that painting or that picture worth? Well, it's worth how much someone's willing to give or how, how you bid over somebody to get that thing. So we just talked about Jesus and how he declared that worth on us, that he was he was willing to give his life for us to, to show us how much uh, a relationship with us is worth to him. Yeah, and we just want to make sure that they know that we can have fun learning about the Bible and we can have fun together as a family and uh, really just make that a priority just being together and um, Lance is very creative in that he just is good about making sure that, that, it, that we do have fun while we're doing it and not just going through the motions but really enjoying each other as a family because we know there's a season uh, and it's very short and they're going to be they're, they may not want to sit and have an auction with the family, so we, we want to take advantage of that now while they're, while they're young. Yeah, we, we absolutely love our church, love the resources, but, but it's our job and it's our responsibility. And so when, when we could follow through a Deuteronomy process of talking to our kids when, when we're lying down, when we're driving in the car, mm -hmm. no matter where we're going, just finding ways to be intentional and talking and sharing about God's love and who He is and who our Creator is. 
that, that is up to us. It's our responsibility. We've always been you know, able and willing to do things like that, but we've always needed a resource. I mean, if you tell me to take that candle and that Bible and that phone and do these things, I could do that. I'll make it work and it'll be fun and the kids will have a great time. Right. But we've always needed just some type of a, a formalized process to do that. We don't, we're not creative in that sense. And, and so we, we've been able to use different family night activities that we found either online or, or through our, our church at Home Point to, uh, to create you know, just a fun environment. And the kids have fun and they could you know, start by dancing or having you know, just yeah. a, a good time getting ready for it. All right, so I'm going to ask you to go in and make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So what did you have to do to make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Do the same thing at the same time. Did you both want to do the same thing at the same time? No. Did you, did you have a different idea about how you want things done? So let me read another scripture for us. And this comes out of Ephesians 5. So submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Does that sound familiar? Marriage is a wonderful thing. It's good to have good godly examples for a marriage in your life, but sometimes that doesn't happen, but that's not an excuse because God is our ultimate example. One of the things that we've done as a family very regularly is meet at the kitchen table for cookies and milk at the end of the day, right before going to bed. We would, um, everybody gets a glass of milk and cookies and we would just sit there and reflect on how we saw God working that day, what was good, what was bad about the day. And it's great with all the activities, especially as the kids get older, for us to just have a time to be still and really discuss what's going on in our lives and, and again, what God has been doing. Right. In addition to that, we try to have uh, devotionals in the evenings. Um, started when they were young, Megan's age, for example. What we will do is we'll do Bible stories with the kids. So we'll sit down and we'll read one, two, maybe three Bible stories each night, and we'll talk about them, what, what's uh, happening, and it develops her uh, questions and her curiosity about what God is doing. And we'll uh, a lot of times tie that into the activities of the day, as Angel said, even with the, with the cookies and milk. I think those help probably the most because... Uh, it's one thing, you know, hear, hear the lesson from the preacher or something, but when you get home uh, and you're actually reading the scripture for yourself, you can just feel free to have one-on-one -on -one questions uh, and get good answers, good insight from, well, I'm not going to say you're older, but <laughs> the older and wiser. <laughs> and we have worked to be intentional about family time, not, you know, always a structured family night, but family dinners or family breakfasts. We drive everywhere. We never fly because that gives us hours and hours in the car when we go skiing, you know, 14, 15 hours with, with three kids and the dog in the car. And we talk, I mean, they take the earbuds out and I ask questions. When we started our family fun nights, you know, it, it's just the boys and I, and, and so we really um, thought it'd be fun to involve more of the family. And so we did get involved with, with the grandparents and that kind of thing, and, and inviting them to be a part of it, inviting the cousins to come over and be a part of it. Um, and then whenever that ceased and that did end, 
um, I can tell you too, we continued it on, at our house on Sunday nights by ourselves um, because we had so much fun with it and the kids looked forward to it so much and, and just, you know, schedules change and things change where we couldn't meet on the night anymore that we were meeting. So we did um, actually continue it on at our house on Sunday nights and um, it was just as fun and just as exciting with, with us three. You know, we were kind of overwhelmed as parents with what's the best way to raise your child, what things do you have to be consistent in. And for us, really the, the main thing that has worked for us is to make sure that we have our time around the dinner table together, that there's no interruptions, that it's dedicated, it's a round table, so we're all looking at each other. And we do that night in and night out. And for us, that's, that's been the, the platform for everything else. One of the things we do as we start to eat is we tell each other our high and our low for the day. And um, regardless of what kind of mood we're in or how obvious the high or how obvious the low is, um, we, uh, we just go around and share those things. And uh, we have one rule when it comes to that is that your low can't be about somebody else. <laughs> so if, Particularly around for, the table. Especially <laughs> if it's someone, yeah, sitting at the table. So uh, what it's done, it, um, sometimes, of course, when you do something out of habit, it can become a habit, but it's always an opportunity to ask more questions. We didn't realize that we were trendsetters when we, <laughs> when we started having these conversations and these meal times together. But since then, we've, we've read a few studies that say that the number one factor in preventing drug abuse in your kids and, and waywardness and all of that is just simply having a family dinner. So we, we got it right and we didn't even know. And she makes good food, so that helps. That does help. <laughs> and they'd come up, they'd say, oh, it's family night. We'd have a theme song, we'd dance to it and have some fun and just, uh, you know, come down and really, and then just have some time to sit down and as a family discuss the Bible, discuss what um, what, we're, what we were talking about, what we were doing, uh, what was what was important to my to my parents, what lessons they wanted us to learn. And they made it fun. They made it they made it seem to us like it was something important. Uh, and you know, even if we weren't always paying attention, which I can, I was the guilty one. I usually wasn't. Um, I was I was always had a lot of energy, but um, you know, even if I wasn't paying attention right then. Later in my life, later in my years, when I was in high school and middle school, when I, you know, maybe was a little older for that, but I still remember those times as my parents putting forth the effort and making sure that I knew God, that I knew these lessons, and I still can recite some of the, some of the family night, uh, family night sayings, just like air, God is there, just some of these things that stuck with, stuck with me, and I'm 19 years old now, and I learned these when I was 11 and 10. We think that family nights are so important because uh, number one, it just gives us an opportunity to have a, a fun night together with our boys. Um, and even beyond that, we can teach them some spiritual truths and just start to instill some things in their lives that we feel like are very important. Um, so we just enjoy family nights. We think they're a lot of fun. Uh, they're they're some most of the time very easy to put on, put together a few supplies uh, and just a few things when we can make a really memorable experience for them. Yeah, we made a treasure map, and um, what we showed them was the, the fun, uh, interactive map um, led to a prize that really was, was filled with trash. It was really worthless, but uh, the map that maybe wasn't as colorful and it didn't look as fun actually led them to the real treasure, uh, and it was fun to see their faces when they opened up the box and saw all the candy and surprises that we put in the real treasure box. And we, we have talked that this life offers so much about... Um, happiness and the world tells us things make us happy and bring us treasure and they only leave us empty and so hopefully through the activity our kids really grasped that and had a good time and made a good memory and they had a um, something that was a seed that was planted. Let's go talk about your maps. This looks like it would lead to a real fun treasure right but what happened when we got all the way and found the treasure? False treasure. False treasure. What's and false? Well, false means not really good treasure. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge. The biggest things we've learned through Family Nights is just to go with the flow as parents. That things happen that you don't expect. Kids say stuff you don't expect. Um, and even sometimes the worst activity that you feel like your child got nothing out of, they'll say something a few days later um, and, and you realize that they really got it and they really learned something from that. And so uh, so it's important as, as parents, just don't give up and just keep trying. Um, some nights you feel like you hit a home run and other nights you strike out, but it's okay because uh, when you're doing those things, uh, God's word doesn't return void.